The Zach Garnett experiment didn't work out in Starkville, and now Jeff Lebby gets to be the head man with this program. He'll act as the team's offensive coordinator as well, to my knowledge, but Jeff Lebby, a longtime offensive coordinator, is now making a journey as a head coach in one of the toughest, if not the toughest, conference in football. Mississippi State has seen some disappointing results in years prior, but can Jeff Lebby elevate this program and have Mississippi State be a surprise in the SEC in 2024? You're about to find out what I think here in this video. What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. I want to welcome you to my channel and welcome you to Prediction Season. We've done over 60 of these because I'm predicting all 134 FBS-level college football teams. That means I'm doing your favorite team, and it means you got to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell, especially if I haven't done your favorite team, or hey, if you're just as big of a college football nerd as I am, to know when your team has a video on my channel. And I want to thank you for watching this video because any video of mine you watch, look, it helps support the channel in more ways than you can even imagine. But you can do a lot more than just watching my videos and subscribing. If you'd like to, like, comment, share, and really anything else you do to interact with the channel helps support what I do here on YouTube. And I really appreciate all the support that I can get. So thank you guys for your support of prediction season so far. We're almost halfway done, but now let's dive on into the Mississippi State Bulldogs in 2024, Jeff Levy's new program. Hey, how do we go ahead and do predictions this year? We're going to take a deep dive into the team's offense, into the defense, and at the end of the video, we will dive on into the Mississippi State football schedule, and we'll give it a game-by-game -game preview and prediction. I do have a couple more things before I do start, because right over here, are going to be the stats the team put up either offensively or defensively last season. And of course, for your viewing pleasure, right below the team's logo, I have put the team's coaching staff. Now I'll get something right out of the way before we really dive on in to this offense. I didn't love the Jeff Lebby hire. And I think it's going to... Look, Jeff Lebby, I think, is a very good uh, offensive mind, and this should be an offensive unit that, look, we'll dive on into the talent here in a little bit. It should see some pretty solid success in, in 2024, but the Jeff Lebby hire didn't really speak to me. I'm not a big fan of it. Hopefully, he can prove me wrong in 2024, but let's talk about the talent here that is with this team. In order to do that, we have to talk about the talent that left the team, and you lost a really good quarterback in Will Rogers. He's had a 4,700-yard season. He did that in 2021. 2022, he had almost 4,000 yards again. Last year, though, a disappointment by his standards. Only 1,626 yards with 12 touchdowns, four interceptions on just under 60% completion percentage. He's found a new home with Jed Fish in the Washington Huskies. And Mike Wright, a former Vanderbilt transfer, is off to the Northwestern Wildcats. So you get Chris Parson back in this room. He threw 26 passes last year, but only completed 11 of them for 103 yards, no touchdowns, and three picks for him last season. So you get a guy from the transfer portal. He's coming over from Baylor, and that is someone by the name of Blake Shapin, and he's shown some really good things during his time at Baylor. Had a 2,700-yard season, nearly 2,800 yards back in 2022. In 2023, 2,188 yards, 13 touchdowns, three picks on uh, just shy of 62% completion percentage. Uh, and if you go back to 2022, where his numbers were a little bit better that season, he definitely kind of took a dip last year. But again, if he can get back to that 2022 form, I really see no reason as to why Blake Shapin can't at least be in contention to get 3,000 yards this year. Do I think it'll happen? Well, the again, it depends on how everything in this wide receiver meshes, but Blake Shapin has shown some really good things during his time in Waco that I think will transition well to Jeff Levy's offensive system here in Starkville in 2024. But this is the skill position room that loses a lot of talent, and you have to start out with the running back room. Woody or Joquavius Marks has entered the transfer portal, is and he has found himself a new home with Oh, my apologies, some caught my throat. He has found a new home with Lincoln Riley's USC Trojans now entering the, the Big Ten Conference. He led the team in rushing last year with 573 yards and four touchdowns on 121 carries. You do lose Simeon Price as well, who was a depth piece in this room, but it is a loss nonetheless. He could have provided solid minutes in 2024. So you get Seth Davis and Jeffrey Pittman back, both of them right around the same carries last year. Davis was second on the team. Pittman was fourth on the team and rushing last season. Sandwiched in between them was the, uh, the quarterback, Mike Wright, that is gone. Uh, but you do get two pretty solid running backs back right there. And Kevon Lee will provide some depth. Depth, my apologies, and David Booth, who's a transfer from Utah State, will provide some depth in there as well. The wide receiver room, though, look, you lost your top five pass catching targets from last season. Fourth on that list was Joquavius Marks, 
but then you lose two guys to the NFL in LaDietrich Griffin and Freddie Robinson. Griffin last year led the team in pretty much every major statistical category, 50 catches, 658 yards, and four touchdowns for him. Freddie Roberson, I believe I said Robinson. I, I, I apologize. There's a Robinson coming up later. But Freddie Roberson had 11 catches for 149 yards and one touchdown last season. So he is going to be gone. You will see both of those guys playing on Sundays. And the, these two guys have found new home through the transfer portal. Xavion Thomas had 503 yards last year and Justin Robinson 257 yards last season. Uh, again, both of them are off to the transfer portal. So while you do lose some guys in, in the portal, including a tight end there in Ryland Goaty, and hopefully I'm saying that last name right, you do get a lot of returning pieces to this wide receiver room that could see some big playing time minutes here in 2024. Jordan, Mo Jordan Mosley and Jaden Wally are among those two, uh, guys that are probably going to get first team rep minutes in 2024. Antonio Harmon and Creed Whittemore also come back to provide some depth, but you get a lot of guys coming over through the portal. Kevin Cole Coleman and Trent Hudson come in from Louisville and New Mexico State, respectively. But the guy that stands out in the wide receiver transfer portal is Kelly Akari. He is coming over from UTEP. I don't know why it changed slides on me. I apologize for that. He's coming over from UTEP where he was a thousand yard receiver. That's really big minutes. And he could be the top target for Blake Shapin in 2024. And well, while this tight end room doesn't really return a a whole lot. Uh, you do get Cameron Ball and Justin Ball. So a uh, Justin Ball's coming over from Vanderbilt and Cameron Ball is coming over from Buffalo. Those are the two guys that are projected to play the most minutes in this uh, tight end room. Um, and again, Antonio Harmon was listed as a tight end on ESPN, has kind of transitioned over to that wide receiver role. So not technically a loss there in any sort of fashion. Offensive line, you lose a lot of offensive linemen from last season. Percy Lewis and Steven Lasoya are both gone through the transfer portal. I believe both of them were starters last year. Cole Smith, Nick Jones, Quatravius Johnson, and Cameron Jones are all gone through graduation. They have run out of college eligibility. They will not be playing college ball anywhere else. So your offensive line, you get Leon Bell, Albert Reese the fourth, and Cannon Boone coming back to this offensive line unit. They may see starting time in 2024, but you get a lot of guys coming over from the portal. Some of them have been starters and a lot of other programs such as McKaylin Pounders. He was a starter at Memphis, now comes over to Mississippi State, should be a starter here. But other guys like Ethan Miner, Jacoby Jackson, Marlon Martinez, and Karsten Upchurch will compete for starting roles in 2024 as well. Again, when you take a look at this offense, it'll be led by Blake Shapin. And what is he going to give you from the quarterback position? I think that's an extremely important question to answer. If you get the 2022 version of the Blake Shapin, I think this offense is going to be sitting really pretty. But no matter, even if you get the 2023 version of Blake like Shapin to where, yes, it was a step back from his 2022 form. He's got some good talent here. Akari is going to be a very good wide receiver for him. We'll see how guys step up in place of what he marks. And Jeff Levy, very, very talented offensive mind. So this should be an offense that sees its success in 2024. But the defensive side of the ball for Mississippi State, while it was a great, great success for them last season, you lose a ton of talent to where you're going to have to fill some holes on this defense for 2024. We'll start out with the defensive line. You lose two guys that are now going to be playing on Sundays, Jaden Crumity and Nathan Pickering are both gone off of this defense. Pickering at 44 tackles and two sacks last year. Crumity, 35 tackles, two and a half sacks last season. So those were two big losses on the defensive line. They were two of your more impactful defensive linemen from last season. However, you do get DeMonte Russell coming back. Deontay Anderson as an edge rusher is going to be coming back to this team as well. Eric Taylor will also be returning to this team, but you get a lot of guys coming over from the transfer portal. Kedrick Bingley Jones, Suleiman Ka uh, Kapaka, and hopefully I, I probably butchered that name, but hopefully I said it correctly, and Ashton Shepard are all coming over from respective programs around the country to help give this defensive line room some boost. Uh, Kapaka is coming over from Purdue. You get Bingley Jones coming over from North Carolina. Uh, and then Shepard, I believe, is a JUCO uh, slash com uh, community college transfer in there at as well. Linebacker room, I mean, look, you, flat out, you just lose two extremely talented linebackers from last season. So talented enough 
that they were actually your top two tacklers from last season. That was Nathaniel Watson, who I believe was SEC Defensive Player of the Year last season. And you also do lose Jet Johnson there as well. Some stat lines for them from last season. Watson with 137 tackles, led the team with 10 sacks, two pass defended, one interception, and Jet Johnson. He also broke 130 tackles, was even with that, 130. Six sacks was second on the team. Three interceptions was tied for the team lead last season. This is a team that sat, had 27 sacks last year. You lose 16 of them along with your top two tacklers that broke triple digits last season. So that is just exceptional talent in that linebacker room that's going to be really hard to fill in exactly what they did last year. However, with that being said, still some solid pieces in this linebacker room. J.P. Purvis, John Lewis, Ty Cooper, and Don Terry Russell all come back while Stone Blanton, Brandon Jennings, and Marcus Ross come in through the portal. That is your whole linebacker team too deep uh, and even three deep there uh, with those uh, transfers, at least according to 247sports.com. You want to go ahead and take a look at your defensive back room? Sure, let's do it. NFL caliber players were littered throughout this defensive back la uh, this defensive back room last season. DeCam DeCamry and Richardson and Marcus Banks are two corners that are going to be leading. Richardson was the team's leader in passes defended and the team's third leading tackler, 79 tackles and seven pass defended. Marcus Banks, a very talented uh, safety slash corner. He, they drafted him as a, a corner, but could play safety as well. 51 tackles, three pass defended last season. DeCarlos Nicholson is a guy that enters the transfer portal. He was a top 10 tackler for the team last year. And Sean Preston, you'll see him playing on Sundays as well. Top five tackler who was with Jet Johnson tied for that team lead in picks from last season. Wow, that's a lot of good talent leaving this defensive back room. It left your cornerback room a little bit thin. Bryce Pollock is coming back, but you had to dive on into the portal. Diago Brumfield is coming over from Memphis, and Brylon Lanier uh, is coming into this program as well. And then the safety room, Corey Ellington is back. He is your leading returning tackler from last season. 66 tackles, two sacks, and two pass defended for him last year. Chris Keyes, Hunter Washington, and Isaac Smith all come back, while Tyler Woodard is the guy they get from the transfer portal. And speaking of portal, kickers are people too. Let's show them some love. One punter leaves through the portal and Keelan Crimmins, so you have to bring another one in in Zachary Haynes while Kyler not Kyler, my apologies, while Kyle Ferry comes back to be the primary place kicker for the Bulldogs in 2024. Okay, so overall when you talk about this defense, and by the way, there are a lot of freshmen both offensively and defensively that I did not mention here, but Mississippi State, I believe, is bringing in a couple of four stars that could see uh, their solid playing time in 2024. That's both offensively and defensively. But overall on this defense, there's a lot of good talent here. Uh, there's a lot of good talent that, that leaves. Yes, there's some good talent here, but overall, I do expect the defense to take a step back in 2024. Zach Arnett was a former defensive coordinator, so you exchange a defensive mind for an offensive mind. Your only hope being that the defensive philosophies that Zach Arnett instilled with a lot of the pieces that are still here can continue in 2024. But again, overall, I see this defense taking a step back from where it was last year. I think you just lost way too much talent. You lost most of your top 10 tacklers from last season. And while I think a lot of these transfers are going to fit in nicely, uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this Mississippi State defense fits together this upcoming season. When you take a look at, at this schedule, in some ways it's manageable, in other ways not so much, but every game at home will be underlined while any game on the road is in italics or that slant to text. Any game in green like the one against Eastern Kentucky to open up the season, in which they have should they should have no trouble with, uh, that is going to be an easy uh, win, a game that Mississippi State should be able to walk away from and get the victory. A uh, close win is going to be anything highlighted in yellow basically any game that i'm looking at thinking oh you might want to watch out for that one but a game that i still have the bulldogs winning and any game in red is a loss and unfortunately i do have arizona state beating the mississippi state bulldogs again the jeff levy hire just did not it impress me and while i like a lot of the talent here that's on this team i like a lot of the talent that's on the arizona state sun devils as well and while they probably won't have the best record at the end of the season they i think will be a lot more competitive than they were in a lot of games last season i think kyle dillingham was the right guy for that job i probably even messed up that first name i think my brain is jumbling around here Kenny, Kenny Dillingham. There we go. See, I knew I had something wrong. Dillingham, I think, is the right man for the job, and Arizona State's bringing in some good recruits. So I think in a couple of years, he'll get that program moving. Arizona State will see their improvements here, and I think one of them is going to be a win against this Mississippi State Bulldog team that I think is going to see their fair share of struggles here in 2024. 
Toledo is going to be a win for this team, but you have to watch out for the Rockets. I know Penny Boone is gone. He was a 1,400-yard rusher last season. Daquan Finn is also gone. They were your best two offensive players last season, the quarterback and running back, respectively, from last year. You do lose some good defensive pieces as well, including that corner whose name is escaping my mind. He very well might have, or I guess to a lot of people, was the best corner going into the NFL draft the last season. April, but Toledo still got a lot of good pieces. They'll be a solid team out of the Mid-American Conference. Mississippi State, though, does have more talent with this game at home. Again, I'd watch out for it, but I do think the Bulldogs will be able to come away with that win. I also think they're going to be able to come away with a win against the Florida Gators. Now, I like a lot of the talent that is on this Florida team, but the Gators lose so many pieces through the transfer portal, yet they were able to supplement through the portal pretty well th themselves. Graham Mertz is coming back. If he can continue to play at the level that he played at last season, this is a Florida team that I know they have a tough schedule. There's a lot of talent on this group, but we know the fans in Starkville, they like to get loud. They like to get proud. And I think they're going to be able to take a win against the Florida Gators here in 2024 early in the season but I think all that momentum that they've started to build is going to die really quickly because you have to go up against two of the best teams in the country in Texas and Georgia I know there's a bye week in between there but you have both of these games on the road and I don't see you winning either one of them Quinn Ewers has a loaded offensive group and that Texas especially in that Texas defense especially if they can fill all the holes on the defensive line is going to be one of the country's better units in 2024 I really like the Longhorns this season they will fit really well into the SEC this year and the Georgia Bulldogs are arguably the best team in college football in 2024 Carson Beck didn't get talked about enough last year he'll be talked about a ton this upcoming season he might be the best quarterback in the country Country. He's got a ton of the just great players in that skill position room, running back, wide receiver, tight end, even though Brock Bowers is gone, offensive line is good. The defense is going to be stellar for Georgia as it usually is. Uh, and that's going to be two straight losses for the Bulldogs to get them back down to 500. And I think this losing streak continues because even though this game is at home and you definitely feel like it's a winnable one for the Mississippi State Bulldogs, I really like Texas A&M and I really like Mike Elko this season, especially if Connor Wiegman can take that next step and elevate his play he's going to be a really good quarterback for this texas a&m team and i think mike elko while again i think you could could have made a little bit of a bigger splash I, that's nothing against mike elko I, I love him i love what he's going to do with this program they bring in some solid transfers and i think a&m is going to be ready to go in 2024 they'll have a better season than what they've had as of late under jimbo fisher and they will beat mississippi state in starkville and i just have a little bit of an upset here. I just think that this bad momentum is going to continue for Mississippi State. Maybe Blake Shapin isn't playing well. Maybe the wide receiver room is just not meshing as it should. Maybe some of the defensive pieces just aren't able to live up to what the defensive pieces from last year were able to do here with this team. Maybe some of those philosophies that Zach Arnett put in kind of go by the wayside a little bit with an offensive mind coming in at head coach there are a lot of things that could happen and I know Arkansas is not a team that you look at this year and you get really impressed by J KJ Jefferson is gone Rocket Sanders is gone some really good pieces defensively are, are gone but Arkansas is still going to hang around they're going to fight in a lot of games this year and this is just one of those games where I see Arkansas being able to go on the road and pick up a, a win here and I actually like the matchup for Arkansas against Mississippi State I think they have a lot of pieces to exploit some of the factors and holes that Mississippi State has this season uh, and I think that is a loss for the Bulldogs I do think they get though their fourth win of the season against the UMass Minutemen that'll be a pretty easy one I don't have to explain away why I made th that decision uh, UMass has been one of the bottom teams in the country for pretty much ever since they got into the, the FBS ranks. And while that's a team trending in the right direction, Bulldogs should be able to win that one fairly easily. And it's going to be tough to make a bowl game because guys, uh, your last three games, I just don't think you're going to win. Nico Iamaliava is going to be a great quarterback for Tennessee this year. Squirrel right 
and uh, Brew McCoy uh, come back there to that Tennessee wide receiver room. The defense is led by James Pierce, a really talented defensive player, and you have to go on the road to Neyland Stadium. That's a loss. Missouri's got Brady Cook and Luther Burden coming back. They, You can make an argument on why they have the best running back room in the SEC, if not one of the better ones in the entire country, with Marcus Carroll and Nate Noel coming in to replace Cody Schrader. So now you have a 1A, 1B. I know Blake Baker is gone, but that defense, and while it loses a lot of pieces and might take a down fall from where it was last season will still be pretty solid but again that cook to burden to burden connection is going to be crazy and i'm really high on lane kiffin's group and the Ole miss rebels in 2024 jackson dart is back they get a lot of talented transfers coming in offensively defensively the defense will take a step in the right direction and i think Ole miss wins the egg bowl on the final week uh, for the final game of the season and i got mississippi state going four and eight now i know it's not what the fans in starkville are going to want to hear but there are some winnable games on the schedule that i just predicted as losses arizona state texas a&m uh, arkansas those are all winnable games for this program and look again i just don't like the jeff levy hire that's just my personal opinion i don't think the rebuild is going to go too well for him and i got mississippi state maybe falling below expectation in 2024 i want to know what you guys think though leave in the comment section below remember to play hard tailgate harder and we're on the james madison up next goodbye